To the show. My name is No Chan, and my name is Mo Chan, and you are watching the Mo Chan and No Chan show. Yes, you are, and we are so excited because we have such a great show for you this week. Yes, we do, No Chan, and amongst all our normal, wonderful, lovely stuff, we have a a very special guest, Christian Brown. Oh yes, we do, Motan, and I cannot wait to see Christian's segment. It's gonna be so great. I am ready. You are ready. They are ready. So let's go. Have a great show, everybody. from ulu, which means to grow, ho'olu, to inspire. And now, the news. Aloha and welcome to the news desk. My name is Taylor Mokisuizu. And I'm Annabelle Fields, and boy do we have a great show for you today. Yes, we do, Annabelle, so let's get right to it. Today we are going to look at the powers of meditation. Research has shown that meditation is of one of the easiest ways to combat the effects of daily stress. People around the world have practiced meditation for centuries, and now in the modern world, it has become one of the most popular pastimes. According to Dr. Dale Gross, simple meditation techniques can do so much, including lower blood pressure, increase circulation, and allow intuition and creativity to thrive. In a seven-year study at MIT with the Dalai Lama, several of his monks and the non with several monks and non-meditators, it was established that not only could meditators hold images longer, have more blood sent to their prefrontal cortex, and have their memory and cognitive fun function increased, but also non-meditators who were instructed to meditate over several months saw the same benefits. Emerging data indicates that by lowering stress and anxiety, meditation 
can be beneficial practice in the workplace as a common tool for overwhelmed workers. In fact, Google has a very popular program called Search Inside Yourself, which teaches mindfulness. Because stress has been connected to illness in the past couple of years, the practice of meditation in hospitals and healthcare facilities is very important. There are many neurological benefits to meditation, including calming the amygdala, where flight and fight and emotions live strength and impulse control, which allows you to self-manage stress, pain, depression, and drug and alcohol issues. There's a lot of information out there about meditation. You can get an audiobook, a normal book, or research a YouTube video. Do some research and learn how to meditate. Yes, taking some time of the day to be still and quiet is very important if you would like to live a healthy and fulfilling life. That is right, Taylor. We all need to put our phones down, step away from the computer, and give ourselves a little TLC. Mm, what is TLC? Tender love and care. That is so cool, Annabelle. We could all do with some TLC. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Aloha. You are watching the Motan and Motan Show. You have entered an inspiring zone. An inspiring zone. Let your life be an inspiration. Are you inspired? What's up, boy? But Arlie Man Harbor Motors and your host of What's Up, Boy? What's up, Hawaii? Brother Arlene here. I've been in the car business for 18 years. One of the first things I teach my customers is where their spare tire is. On this vehicle, it's in the trunk under the rear carpet. We want to make sure that there's a jack, there's some tools, there's a spare tire, and really make sure there's air. On some vehicles, it's apparent where the spare tire is. On this Jeep, it's right back here. On this vehicle right here, you might not see it. You might look under the rear carpet you won't find one because this vehicle, the tire is underneath. The tools, right above here. On some of the newer vehicles, they don't even have a spare tire, but they have a gel that they use to fill the tire up. Folks, make sure whenever you're changing a spare tire on the side of the road, you're pulled on the side and you're in clearance so you don't get hit by a car. Make sure you teach your children, teach your husband, and teach your wives. Hawaii, you stay safe. Aloha. What's up, Hawaii? Brother Arlen here at Papa High School Gym, and I'm with my friend, Dominique. Dominique, we're here at your league that you and your husband started. Yes. What is it called? It's the Eastside Basketball League. We started this league 12 years ago um, when our son was interested in playing basketball. We didn't really have a program here in Papa, and we thought, you know, there's a lot of kids that were probably interested. We currently have over 300 kids registered and we don't advertise but it's you know something we enjoy uh, for our side of the island in the community. I, I, I think it's great. I've been I think coaching like three years now with you and, and this thing that you brought all the way to Kapa is it, funny but so much kids wait all year and they only play in this league. Wow. Yeah, my, my kids, tonight was our last game, and um, it was so exciting. I know there's so much hard work in, involved in it. How much of you guys are involved in setting this whole thing up? There's, there's just a handful of us, really, that come and find 
Friday nights we set up and we um, come here Saturday and spend the day. It's, it's not a whole lot. <laughs> so what what is a typical day for you? How long is a day? What, when does it start? On, on Saturdays we're here from 9.30 a.m. We leave probably about 10.30 p.m. So we, we have uh, eight rockets from kindergarten all the way through eighth grade. Wow, that's so, so awesome. Yeah, so it's a lot of watch all these kids grow up and I see them get better and better and and I think the hugest thing for me is I watch them transition into high school yeah. so your league helps these children get into high school yes. basketball oh that's great I'm glad to hear that I mean we really just want to provide the kids something you know to do with the community and keep it affordable for everybody to play. so I'm glad if we benefit them in high school that's great yeah I'm glad I, to hear that I'm so I'm so thankful that you have this. I know the community is thankful. Um, how can so when does the season run for for you? Well, registration usually happens in January of each year, and then we run our league from February to April. February yes. to April. Yes. So, do they contact go through the school? Do they contact you directly? We don't really advertise, but it's kind of word of mouth, and, and we do have registration in the public. So if they wanted uh, more information, how would they get that information on their leave? Um, we currently are working on a website, but we don't really have anything currently. We just, you know, uh, grassroots <laughs> go to the office and they'll forward information. If they contact any office, they have my email. So Coconut Wireless, right? Coconut Wireless, so definitely. Coconut Wireless. Yes. Well, awesome, Dominique. I want to thank you and your family for all that you guys do for the community. Um, I think that's the biggest thing for us. We love coming out here. Families out here tonight were crying that it was the last game. Some of their kids are 8th grade going to high school, and they're not going to be playing this uh, anymore. But we want to thank you, and we appreciate all that you do for our community. Uh, We couldn't do what we do without coaches like you, though. Take time off of work and have practice with them during the week, and then dedicate time with them on Saturdays. And you know, working with them is not easy. And so, without people like you, we wouldn't even be able to have this. So, thank you. All. Oh, awesome, awesome. We appreciate it. So, Hawaii, you heard it. Get into your community, do something good, get involved, help the children, bring up and lift up everyone. Hawaii, aloha. Thank you, aloha. Put your hands together. What's up, Hawaii? Brother Arlen here. In life, we go through a lot of ups and downs. If you're having a tough time right now, don't worry about it. It'll pass. Stay positive. Keep on doing the right things, and everything will be okay. Until next time, see you on the What's Up Hawaii. chee Put your hands together. and help us spread our inspiring show throughout the world. Aloha, this is Cole. Aloha, this is Trey. And you're, you're watching, watching the MoCan and No Can show exclusively on OC16. You are watching the MoCan and No Can show. We exercise the body, soul, and mind. Take away personal fitness instructor, Natalie. Woo! Aloha. My name is Natalie Senek. I'm the owner of Live Fierce Fitness and I'm a personal trainer at the Kauai Athletic Club. So the news desk talked about meditation. An important part of meditation and an exercise as well is breathing. We often don't even think about our breathing because we're automatically doing it to survive. But focusing in on your breathing, on your inhaling and your exhaling can really help you to get down into the moment and relax. When I tell my clients during their exercising or in meditation, when I want them to be mindful and relaxed, I tell them to think about deep inhales through the nose, coming all the way from the belly, and exhale out. See if you can really extend that exhale, a couple of, a couple of extra counts longer than you normally would. Three or four of those deep breaths will help you to start relaxing. If you're new to meditation, it kind of can be overwhelming. So I tell my clients, just thinking about the breath, not thinking about anything else, just feel the breath and physically come into your body. Because breathing is an 
thinking about being mindful and relaxed is an important component of your overall wellness, which includes also exercising and eating well. Welcome to this prime small group training here at the Kauai Athletic Club. These are three women that I've been working with together for some of them over two years. They have a program here that they follow at the gym to get strong and fit. And we meet together once a week to have some camaraderie and just to have that fe of feeling of accountability. We've got Sherry. Hi. Kellyanne. Hi. And Callie. Hello. So today, these three women are going to do a circuit workout where we have three stations that they're going to move through, spending 45 seconds at each station. This is going to really help to build strength and maximize fat burn. Station number one, they're going to grab a set of dumbbells and they're going to do bicep curls. They're going to do five on one side and then five on the other, repeating for 45 seconds. Station number two is going to be for your back and shoulders. We're going to do a dumbbell bent over row. You're going to hinge at the hips, keep your core and glutes engaged. And you're going to exhale, pulling the elbows back. Hold for two and down. Exhale, hold and down. And finally, station number three is a medicine ball throw. We have these weighted balls. We're going to take the ball, we're going to squat, and we're going to twist from the waist going across. Reach your hips back and explode up. Full hip extension to the top. I don't even care if you go that fast. I just want to make sure you get that full butt squeeze at the top. Use go. So Sherry, hold right here. Keep the elbows at 90 degrees. Do your five. Nice, Kellyanne. Notice how well she's not shrugging the shoulders here. I've got no corrections. Her form is so perfect. Her glutes are engaged. Her core is engaged. Perfect textbook form. Good, and great breathing. Exhaling, she pulled those dumbbells up. Very nice. Thank you for joining me today and my clients. Don't forget that breathing and meditation is an important component of being healthy overall. Focus on your breaths and stop. Focus on the inhales and exhales. Until next time, aloha.
step up, step up, step up, step up and pursue it. Do it for love, ooh, do it for the children. Come on, come on, come on. Aloha, my name is Kristen Brown. Um, I'm originally from the East Coast. I was born in Washington, D.C. I have lived on Kauai for 12 years now. I am an entrepreneur who has found herself creating sustainably made in the U.S. women's bathrobes, of all things. My biological parents are Debbie and Rodney. Debbie went on to marry Herb Lewis, who is my other father, and they gave me three siblings. And my father, Rodney, gave me three siblings. So in total, I have six siblings. When I was a little girl, I loved to play like all kids, but some of my favorite times of playing were definitely outside, whether it was at the beach or going on camping trips with my dad, going on hikes, riding my bike, climbing trees. I was the girl that got stuck in the tree half the time with the boys and had to be helped down. But that was tomboy. That was the kind of childhood I had. So I attended Cape St. Clair Elementary School in Annapolis, Maryland, and then I ended up going to Magothy Middle School and Severn River Junior High School. And shortly after that, I ended up with my mom in Connecticut and went to Greenwich High School where I graduated. So after high school, I attended the University of South Carolina for a year and actually wanted to try in other places to go to school. So I ended up back in Connecticut for a little while at the University of Connecticut. And then I actually graduated from Hunter College in Manhattan, New York with a degree in communications and a minor in sociology. On my last semester of college, I got a call one night from a friend who I hadn't heard from for quite a while. And I found out that she was living in Denver, Colorado and had been a part of a national service program called AmeriCorps. And it sounded incredible. She sounded just so happy and had had so many adventures to share. And she said I should look into the program. Um, I ran it by my mother and my mother was not right on board right away because she, you know, I just was ready to get a degree. She wanted me to go get a job. But then she spoke with my auntie, her older sister, who works um, for the government in DC and was very familiar with the program. And my aunt said, absolutely, it is a wonderful um, a pro experience, a wonderful program. So what we did is we traveled for 10 months. It was t a team of 10, of 18 to 24 year olds. And we worked in all different communities. We were in New Mexico. We helped the National Park build a boardwalk to make it more wheelchair accessible. We did a project on Lake Superior on this gorgeous island where we re-roofed Adirondacks huts and built trails. We worked in Denver, Colorado with underfunded middle schools and helped as teachers aides. We were in um, disaster relief for Hurricane Katrina and it was some of the best years of my life. It really gave me this um, bigger desire than ever to be of service and to travel. How I landed on Kauai is I tell people I set my sail and this is 
is where the wind carried me. After AmeriCorps, I stayed in Colorado and I moved to Vail for a season and I learned how to snowboard and do things that I'd never done before. I wanted to continue um, to do service work and so I started to apply for the Peace Corps and to program in Peru to save sea turtles, but I had this lingering student loan that I needed to take care of. And so one day I went into work as a server at a restaurant and one of my friends was saying that they were moving to Hawaii and did I want to go? And I figured if I did that, I could get a regular job and then start paying off my student loans. However, um, I needed to save more money. And at that point, when the season in Vail was over, it was very quiet town. And I called my old restaurant jobs in Connecticut and asked if I could be hired for the summer. So I worked three jobs, three months straight, every day, saved money, and I went and lived back with my parents. And at that point, my mom and my stepdad for a while had been a part of the herbal supplement industry. And living in Colorado got me a lot more aware of healthy lifestyle habits. And I went, when I went to live with them, I was starting to question, well, how come you guys have this in the fridge and so forth? And my mom was like, I think maybe you would really like to work for New Chapter, the organic supplement company that they work, they helped actually create. And at that point, I, I was open, and sure enough, um, they they could use they could they needed a rep to be out here, and that landed me here with a full time career. So the job as an herbal supplement rep entailed me to travel to all the Hawaii health food stores and educate about herbs. And in the process, I met my daughter's father, and we had a baby girl two years later um, after moving here, my, my beautiful daughter, Francesca Uwe Brown. For the past three years, I've been working on a project as an entrepreneur called Imbued. Imbued means to inspire with a feeling or quality. And it is a sustainably made in the U.S. women's bathrobe line. Of all things, I never thought that's what I would be doing. Um, but because of my passion for sustainability, um, a desire to be more creative and to connect with more people outside of the business realm that I've been in, this is what idea came through and I've been rolling with it. So the robes are um, lightweight. They're not your typical thick terry cloth frumpy robe or too sassy kind of robe, really lacy and short. They're beautiful and classy and incredibly comfortable, made out of a fabric called Modal for now. Um, I've been on such a mission the past three years to understand the fashion industry and the need for sustainability. Um, there's a lot of gaps to be filled within the textile industry to create more organic options, but for now, Modal is a, a really nice option as far as sustainability. It is made from a uh, um, tree, it's similar to bamboo, where it requires a lot less water and no chemicals. The modal I'm using is certified um, to be a cleaner um, process, and it comes from Australia. It's very soft and it does it, it lasts longer than most fabric. It doesn't pill where it kind of starts to look old. The dye stays longer, therefore you're not gonna throw it out more quickly. In fact, I am hoping that these robes will actually be passed down from generation to generation maybe with a really beautiful story to tell. And I'm really excited because all these years later after AmeriCorps, it unlocked a desire within me which is now imbued into my business model where 10%, I'm hoping, it might be 5%, I have to see, but a percentage of proceeds for each collection of robes will be donated to one small nonprofit. And the first nonprofit I have chosen is Kauai Animal Education Center. And I am so pleased and, and delighted to be able to share with them in this journey. And so here I am three years later and coming so close finally to launch date, which I am hoping to be the end of May, early June. And if you'd like to find out more about what I I've been doing with Imbued, you can go to www.imbued.co, C-O. What inspires me more than anything since AmeriCorps is definitely to connect to community and to be of service. And because of all these years, actually 12 years later now, in the herbal supplement business, sustainability plays a huge role in my day-to-day -day actions. And along the way, creativity, 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 any outlet that I can find to, to be able to express myself. Through this journey, biggest lesson is 
follow your dreams. Just give it a try. It may be scary. Their guarantee will be bang ups and hang ups along the way as there have absolutely been for me. But there's a reason these ideas and these desires are in you. Follow them. It's okay if you're scared. Inspiration will pull you along and the, re the results will be rewarding, guaranteed. My name is Kristen Brown and I'm inspired. Are you inspired? Wow, that was great, Motown. What a great show. Thank you everyone who contributed to the show and thank you people for watching. We hope you enjoyed it and we will see you next time. Yes, we will. Next time, right here on the Motown and Motown Show. Woohoo! Thank you for watching.